The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining another edition of Buzzword Breakdown, where we take a popular term that's out there in the market ecosystem and you know boil it down into simple terms. You know, our goal with these is to kind of make it more understandable, some term that's buzzing out there, and, and really make it more approachable for your business and how to incorporate incorporated uh, for your success. Uh, today we're going to talk about video and we're going to branch out a little bit and talk about video everywhere. You know, there's a host of platforms now that incorporate video, practically all of them, um, and pe people are consuming it like never before. And so with you today, you have myself, I'm Bob Batchelor. If you have, haven't been on these before, I like to tout that I've been around before Facebook launch. I'm not sure why I tout that because it only shows how old I am. But I do love digital marketing and, and uh, the evolution and the constant uh, speed of change in it. And today I am super excited, very honored, honored uh, and humbled. I'm going to try to combine those two words today uh, to introduce Brian Kroll. He'll be speaking uh, about video and you can read a little bit of his accolades there about him developing the original Magellan optimization algorithm. Uh, he has a beautiful son, lives in the Bay Area. But to tell you a little bit more about Brian, you know, there's a few people that I meet in my life and, or around a, an office or at a social event and you're just like, damn, this person is insanely smart and that's Brian. And I, I kind of flash back and age myself again uh, to the old E.F. Hutton commercials uh, way back, I think in the late 80s, where it was when E.F. Hutton speaks, shh, everybody listens. So that's kind of Brian. He'll be speaking. I hope everybody listens up, learns some uh, good things, grabs some good insights. And so without further ado, I hand it over to Mr. Brian Kroll. Hey, thanks, Bob. No pressure. Uh, now I got to do well. So, uh, But thank you very much for that intro. Appreciate it. Um, hey, guys, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, here's sort of the agenda that we'll run through. Um, so we'll kind of go through like why digital video makes so much sense now for marketing. Uh, some great ways to get personal with digital video. Um, we'll run through all the different platforms and capabilities that exist for marketers to connect with your audiences uh, using digital video. And then more importantly, we'll talk about how we sort of weave everything together. So, you know, the whole video everywhere, what happens when you start running video across multiple platforms? What are some good omni-channel strategies to, uh, to, to work with on your digital video campaigns? So that said, uh, why digital video now? Um, you know, one of my favorite things about digital video and, and video in general is video has that unique capability, power of being able to sort of combine site sound and motion uh, to elicit an emotional response. And there's just, you know, as much as I love the standard graphical banner ad, or text ads or other ad formats where, you know, you are, are getting a message across, nothing quite does it the same way that video does um, because it can sort of tag that, that response in, in your brain to, to get you to think differently about something. Um, and it works really well in particular for the travel industry, um, which I have sort of an example here for you next. Um, normally I do this uh, at sort of seminars. And so I'd be, you know, imagine in a big room full of people asking everybody to raise your hand. If, how many of you have been to Central Oregon? And, uh, you know, mostly it's a smattering of, of hands. Try to ask people sort of what they, what they think of when you say the words Central Oregon. If you try and visualize, visualize that. Uh, what do you think is there? A lot of people will just say, well, it's a tree, it's rugged, there's a bunch of, you know, guys and beards hunting for Sasquatch, something like that. Um, but it's a really uh, interesting um, uh, place, and we, we show that working with the Central Oregon Visitors Association uh, using video of, of how to sort of, you know, showcase their, their place in the world to potential tourists. And I figured it wouldn't be a good presentation without video uh, if we didn't actually have some video. So I'll show you one of the, the ads that we that we run right now for them now. How can something be so rugged and luxurious at the same time? Careful planning and a little help from Mother Nature. Meet the indulgent side of Central Oregon, where pristine wilderness meets hot stone massages, James Beard nominated chefs, and world-class resorts. The wilderness is left unspoiled. 
Central Oregon. Adventure Calls. So this is a spot, we actually didn't build this spot. Uh, the great team at uh, Central Oregon Visitor Association built, built this video. But this is something that we've been running uh, using connected TV into their feeder markets. And essentially, um, we've, we've been able to you know, advertise on connected TV in the San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles area, Denver area, uh, Phoenix area. Basically, they've got about 14 different places where you can get direct flights into the Bend Redmond uh, uh, Airport. And so we're advertising that video as uh, on to people on watching connected TV uh, to entice them to explore Central Oregon. And what's interesting is, uh, you know, a, a generic video. I would say this is not really generic. This is a, is a great video, but it's sort of like, okay, that's cool, looks nice. Um, but when we start digging into sort of like the real personalization aspect of it, you know, with the technology we have these days, you don't just show one video, you can start showing multiple different videos and in sequence. And so if, let's say that, you know, someone has gone to Central Oregon's website or we know somebody is interested in golf, there's some amazing golf courses up there in Central Oregon. Instead of just showing that same video about why Central Oregon, now it's talking about golf and you're getting personal and you're showing golf videos to golfers. Uh, if you are interested in culinary uh, aspect or uh, say Brewfest craft beer, amazing craft beer place, Central Oregon. So you start remarketing to those folks with craft beer or potentially targeting people with third party data saying, um, you know, talking about what's happening up in, in uh, with the Brewfest. Uh, or maybe it's if you're into uh, family and outdoors, um, you know, watching hot air balloons launch in, in a festival uh, is something that you would want to remark to video or potentially to sequentially message to people. And what you're able to kind of do with this is get, you know, not just the, the message out, but you're starting to speak to people now. It becomes personalized. And if you're not getting, you know, the targeting the people with the right video content, um, you're missing out. And there's a huge opportunity to do that now with personalization of video. It's manual. There's nothing that's really dynamic that we can do uh, you know, per se, like you would do a dynamic display ads or something along those lines. Um, but with just a little bit of forethought and some planning, you were able to build some pretty cool uh, campaigns where you can sequentially message people after somebody's watched 100% of video one, you show them video two, after they've watched 100% of video two, you show them video three, et cetera. So some pretty cool stuff that can be done there. Uh, another reason why digital video now is that video engagement is just absolutely skyrocketing and great, great visual here by, by Bob. Um, you know, some of the benefits of video, 85% of the U.S. Internet audience watches videos online and half of U.S. consumers subscribe to some sort of paid streaming video service. You know, more video content is uploaded in 30 days than the major U.S. TV networks have created in 30 years. And, you know, YouTube is, is the behemoth. It's the 8,000 pound gorilla of video. More than 500 million videos are watched, million hours, excuse me, of videos are watched on YouTube each day. And studies have shown that marketers who use video effectively, they're able to grow their revenue 49% faster than non-video users. So there's a lot of reasons why, uh, why video. Uh, the other thing is that media consumption is definitely on the rise. So it's not on the rise for all platforms, though. Uh, if you look over there on the stat on the right, uh, the average adult spend, average U.S. adult, I should say, uh, it spends over 724.9 minutes uh, on, engaged with major media on an average day. It's over 12 hours. And it's actually gone up about 15 to 16 minutes from 2017 from this eMarketer stat. Um, but it hasn't gone up for, for all, all platforms. Um, they're, they're talking about when they, when they qualify this, they're saying that it's people who are engaged with, uh, they count desktop and mobile. That would be people working, checking their emails, obviously from 2011 to 2015, that skyrocketed. Uh, but look at start what happened in 2011, um, TV consumption started to decline, uh, mass media, the traditional media, so print, uh, and radio also started to decline, but you started to see the rise in connected TV and, and video consumption. Um, back in 2011. And then, you know, from a subsequent study, uh, 2015 to 18, you can see that desktop and mobile are still gaining. TV is losing uh, significantly, you know, more, uh, but connected TV and video is, is where all of those gains are happening. That's where most people are spending the more time sort of, you know, against previous years 
Uh, so it's it, media consumption is definitely on the rise, but it sort of depends on on the platform. What's interesting about that is, from a marketing perspective, consumers almost always move faster than marketers. If you look at sort of the pie chart on the left here, um, the time spent with traditional TV is about 75% versus 25% to digital video, but ad dollars are still going to traditional TV. There's an imbalance here where 87% of the spending is going to traditional TV and only 13% to digital video, but that's where the eyeballs are going. So, you know, looking at this, um, the eyeballs are not just on uh, the TV itself, uh, consumers are watching video across all different kinds of devices. Um, so connected TV represents about 22% uh, of, of video views, um, desktop and laptops about 34%, um, tablets 19%, and then smartphones about 26%. And oftentimes, I'll bet sort of think about your own habits, um, one person may go across all, every single one of these devices in a day, or at least two or three of these in, in a single day. So if you're only uh, you know, for, if you're buying broadcast TV and that's all you're buying, you're not engaging or not buying digital video, you are potentially missing out on a huge group of potential customers. So some other interesting stats here. Um, the average user spends about 88% more time on a website that has video than websites that don't. And also, you know, in terms of educational video pre preference, where both video and text are available on the same page, 72% of users will prefer to use video to learn about a product or a service. So if you think about that, you know, most people who would want, you know, our websites are, are you know, they're, they're always on brochure for our businesses. And if you just have plain text, that's great, but you can get so much more out when you start combining those elements of motion and sound as opposed to just sight, you know, not just people reading, but think about what you can do with video. So, you know, consumers prefer it. Um, highly recommend that if you are a business that it has the means um, that you definitely work on getting some educational videos um, on your website. Some of the trends that we've been seeing with video, um, I don't think anybody likes watching long video ads, but they keep getting shorter and shorter. Um, most video ads that we've seen, uh, you know, the 30 second spots, most people are getting really good at trimming and curing the content down to 15 second spots. And then we've also seen um, the proliferation of six second spots on YouTube, the bumper ads, and then you know, we'll get into this a little bit later. But uh, Snapchat also kind of has that uh, five seconds or snackable ad, ad format. Um, mobile viewing is huge. Um, and mobile viewing also in terms of like the way people are using, again, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but mobile, mobile viewing is, is massive and the, we kind of talked about this earlier, but deeper personalization. So, you know, we're able to, to, because of the targeting that we have available, um, to start putting the right video in front of the right person at the right time. Uh, and we can do that using programmatic ad buying. So we set up sort of, you know, mechanized rules to say, you know, try and win uh, this many impressions against this particular audience and show them this exact ad, show that to them this many times between these hours of these days. Uh, and by able, when you're able to do that, um, you know, you're able to measure the impact because all of the data that we get back from this, there's, there's amazing reporting, there's amazing insights you can get. And basically all of the power of digital advertising now comes to video. And you can sort of see where video fits in, uh, you know, what we call like the RTB pass to purchase. Um, and the other thing I think that's interesting in the trend is that it, because there are there's so much video out there, there's also sort of ubiquitous distribution opportunities. So there's there's the opportunity to reach people just about across any different type of device, um, whether that's user generated content or whether that's professionally produced content. Um, such as live streaming TV shows and, and whatnot now. All right, so getting into the fun stuff. So all the different platforms and their capabilities. So kind of starting with the, the old tried and true um, programmatic video or what's also known as RTB pre-roll and RTB stands for real-time bidding for uh, those of you who don't know. That's when, let's say you're on a website and uh, let's say you're going, you know, March Madness is starting tomorrow. Let's say you're gonna be going and, you know, looking to see highlights. Uh, you might go to ESPN or you might go to CBS Sports or one of those sites and uh, you might start watching some of the video highlights there on your desktop. Well, before the, the, that video or the, the, 
the uh, highlights that you want to watch uh, show up, that's when people are putting ads in front of you. So we're bidding essentially to put an ad in front of somebody it's called pre-roll. Uh, and you can do some pretty amazing targeting with this. So you, know, you can target third party data or first party data. Um, first party data would be like remarketing. People have been on your website. Um, third party data would be, let's say you want to target basketball fans, or let's say you are like a, 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 a pizza delivery, you want to target people who are interested in March Madness to have your pizza delivered. Um, those can all be targeted to target people in your area, zip code level, um, exact audiences you want to reach. Um, you can also track, you know, sort of the, the goal of video uh, is not really to get a click. The goal of video is to get somebody to generally watch 100% of that video and then to track if that person makes it to your website later. So we do that through what's called view through tracking. Um, we're able to see if people have watched 100% of the video or any of the different quartiles, whether it's 25, 50, 75%, et cetera. Uh, and then people go to a website um, that allows us to sort of see the effect of that video. And then that also allows us to optimize all of the different placements that we're buying programmatically for conversions. Um, you know, so if we see that somebody goes to a website and let's say you're that, that pizza place and they fill out an online order to have a, you know, pick up a pizza. Um, technically you can track all of that. So, you know, it's, it's a great way to sort of show the cause and effect of your investment, um, all the way through the funnel. And that's sort of like the, the simplest sort of, you know, oldest version of, uh, a video, video marketing, uh, up and coming, uh, we have. Uh, social and so you know snapchat as I mentioned earlier they are uh, their video ads or snap ads they're they're great they're they're like a full screen canvas and they're great for direct response um, with snapchat's platform it's really all about keeping things five seconds or less um, you don't want to go too long with with snapchat's audience it's all about just sort of quick snackable content um, and then also thinking about sort of their audience or just in, in general, um, the vertical format has definitely taken over in terms of video. And a lot of advertisers have some challenges with that, um, but highly recommend getting used to sort of producing video in that vertical format. If you think about it, it fits the selfie um, generation. People who have grown up taking selfies on their phones, um, that vertical format is huge. And so, you know, we always try and advise people that when you're thinking of creating these videos, if you've only got five seconds, you really have to keep the objective in mind. You know, what do you want to get across to the user? Um, try and use a singular message. Don't try and cram too much in there. Uh, and then use purposeful sound. Use a voiceover if, if you've got it. Um, but, you know, use, use the right sound to make it work. And then, you know, with Snap Ads, um, you, can all do, you can do precision targeting there as well. So same thing with remarketing, so first-party data. Um, you can do some great lookalike targeting with Snap, and that would be, uh, people who are either on a customer list of yours, you can upload a customer list and then um, use that as a way to sort of find people who look like that customer from like a data profile perspective, um, or you could you look alike off of your website. So people who are coming to your website or key places to your website, um, look alike model off of that to find people who fit the sort of same digital footprint um, as your current customer base. Getting over to social on uh, other parts of social, so Facebook and Instagram, uh, click ads. So with a standard sort of single image ad in, uh, in Facebook, you don't have to use a static image. You can use a GIF or you can use a static image, but you know, video actually works really well in place of that image and it's great for direct response. Um, it's also great for, you know, engagement and sort of upper funnel branding, but same thing with Snapchat, the targeting you can do on Facebook and Instagram is amazing with video. And you know that first party data and lookalike targeting, those are keys to success with social. Um, it's typically, they're really good at knowing who these people are that sort of fit the same digital footprint as your customers. So highly recommend that as a, as a way. And you see in this example, you know, this is sort of like a standard, you know, we'll call it like widescreen format video that's showing up in that Tommy Hilfiger ad there in this example. Um, but the stories ad on Facebook is uh, blowing up as well too. And Facebook has sort of told us that, you know, in 2019, um, they expect people to be using the stories format um, more than newsfeed in 2019, which is going to be a dramatic shift because, you know, if the eyeballs, again, if consumers are moving faster than marketers, more and more consumers are looking at stories, um, fewer and fewer marketers are advertising there, and fewer, you know, most marketers are still in the newsfeed. That's going to create some um, some really interesting um, supply and demand when it comes to an auction 
uh, you'll be able to get much better uh, CPMs on stories ads and, and better effects because there will be fewer marketers and advertisers there. So definitely follow the consumers and follow them quickly. Um, make sure you can get that, that vertical format for video um, happening, happening as, as quickly as you can for your business. Here's an example of kind of what that looks like. So, you know, it's a full screen, it's vertical, it's immersive. Um, you can combine text, but it's, it's you know, you, it's essentially you're, you're designing these to generate action. So you want to try and inspire people to take action after seeing these ads. And some of the insights from um, Facebook are that 50% of people said they're making more purchases as a result of seeing these types of ads. So definitely a powerful format to invest in. YouTube. Uh, as I said earlier, it's the 8,000 pound gorilla of video. Um, YouTube has, is, is the second largest search engine. It's, you know, behind Google. More people are going to YouTube for videos on how to, um, learning about places. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a massive marketplace of video. And with YouTube, again, you have extraordinary targeting. So you can target audiences, um, you know, based on demographic information, based on interest information, in market, you can do keyword targeting, um, you can target affinity audiences, um, pretty much anything you want, you have this massive amount of um, data at your disposal to target. And it's really great for prospecting. So um, YouTube has a cost per completed view model, it's called the true view model. And typically it, it ranges in like the 10 to 15 cent range, um, but you only pay when either 100% of the video is watched or 30 seconds, whichever comes first. Um, so it's, it's a great mechanism to say, hey, I, I invested in this video. I want to make sure people are watching the video. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic mechanism to make sure that you, your videos are being watched. Uh, and then you can have the same sort of tracking capabilities you, you have with pre-roll or anything else where you can you know, put down tags across your website and then optimize for conversions. Uh, and then you can also do remarketing for search with YouTube. So um, you're essentially able to remarket search ads to people who have engaged on your site and who are actively searching on um, Google using your keywords. So great, great synergy with Google and YouTube when it comes to targeting for video. Um, they also have a couple of different kinds of formats. I talked about the TrueView in-stream. That would be very similar to a pre-roll. Um, and generally, those are skippable. So if somebody doesn't want to watch it, let them self-select out. Uh, you don't pay anything unless they watch, uh, uh, you know, like the full video or 30 seconds. And what's great about that too is if you design your videos the right way, we always advise people to load branding or a logo or something within the first five seconds. So even if somebody chooses to skip it, you're still getting an on-target, on-brand impression, uh, and you're not paying anything for it. So great sort of uh, hack there for for advertising on YouTube. Um, when it comes to TrueView Discovery, um, for anybody who uses YouTube, you also notice that you see ads along the right-hand rail um, that sort of appear alongside YouTube videos. They also kind of appear sometimes on the Google Display Network. And you only uh, pay for those when somebody chooses or selects to watch that video. So that's also also a great benefit. Um, but you get, the, you get the branded impression as well, regardless whether they choose to watch it or not. Um, also, I mentioned this earlier. I say kind of new-ish, but bumper ads. Um, they've been around for a while, but they're really starting to pick up in popularity. It's that six second sort of snackable content length, um, bite size, type of mind awareness. And they work great for a remarketing standpoint. Um, they work great for cutting down. If somebody's you know watched uh, a larger video of yours, like a 15 or a 30 second spot, but they haven't hit your site yet, you can use this as a way to remarket people who have um, previously viewed your message. So it's a great way to really sort of um, amplify what you're doing or remarket to people who, who you want to sort of take action and take the next step to engage with your brand. Uh, and then, you know, all, all of these formats have really amazing reporting. Um, you can, of course, see the impressions, look at the cost per view, um, click through rate for people who do choose to click. Um, mainly we're focused on conversions here at Ad Taxi. So people who are going to be engaging with the ads and then um, making some sort of conversion action um, on your website. Now to the most fun platform, or the most interesting platform, in, in my opinion, which is um, part of the title here today, and cord cutting, uh, is your business ready for the connected TV restoration? Sorry, I can't search the web. Uh, sorry, my Apple Watch just decided to start asking for something. <laughs> um, so what is connected TV? So connected TV is TV's impact, but it's got digital's precision. So, you know, it's the biggest screen in the household, 
uh, you're delivering premium TV content, uh, but you're doing it through an internet connected device. So it's either a smart TV or it's a like an Amazon Fire Stick, or it could be a console like a Xbox or PlayStation, um, something like that. But basically now there's a way for people to reach uh, the largest screen in the house, um, but you can do it in a very cost effective way. And you know, it, it, kind of thinking about this from a video everywhere standpoint, OTT or over the top, um, that content is all delivered via internet connection. So it's all streaming. And like I said, it's either smart TV or other connected devices, but it's not just a TV. <clears throat> you can also stream on your, <clears throat> excuse me, on your laptop, you can stream on your phone, on your tablet. Um, it's really trying to engage the consumer wherever the consumer is and try and getting in front of people sort of, you know, at their, at what, while they're doing something that's convenient to them. Um, the benefits of, you know, sort of advanced TV or connected TV, uh, you can reach consumers beyond traditional TV. There's a significant portion of the marketplace that has cut the cord. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but your TV ads aren't really reaching those people. And the other thing that the traditional TV consumers are generally watching for a long period of time, uh, you know, several hours a day. So if you're a traditional TV advertiser, you're getting a lot of messaging, but you're reaching the same people, um, and it may not really be helping out your 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 cause. So with, with streaming content, uh, those are people who are sort of watching selectively, watching what they want, and you really only need to target them once or once or twice a day. So you can you can choose sort of the message, device, and time optimization. Um, you can really work to build out some pretty immersive creative experiences. I, I love the concept of sequential messaging with connected TV um, across our advanced TV, across all devices. It, the other great thing is it's 100% viewable. So, you know, it's it's something where you know you're getting your message on brand. Um, they're largely not skippable ads, just like you can't really skip a standard TV ad if you're watching through cable. Um, so they have really high completion rates for those videos. And the best part is, is it's none of it is user-generated content. It's all premium. It's all brand-safe environment. Uh, and the best part is it's measurable. So instead of just running a broadcast budget and then sort of hoping that you're on target or hoping that people are taking action, not only can we see uh, down to sort of you know like the the you know completion rates, um, you can also see track people who are going to your website for potentially online or offline conversions um, based on seeing your connected TV ads. So it's it's uh, it's a really fun time to be in marketing now with what's happening on the on the connected TV side of things. And there's a couple of different you know sort of ways to to get about reaching uh, these consumers. So you can kind of go through the premium distributors and that would be like, you know, buying through Sling or through DirecTV Now, um, Pluto, there's a, a, a wide range of them. Um, then you also have sort of the direct networks. So the content owners themselves are getting out there and, um, you know, A&E, Discovery, Fox, Bloomberg, Scripps, et cetera. Um, they're, they're putting all of their content out there and then they're pushing it out either through a distributor or directly depending on how you're, how you're accessing it. It might be an app through Apple TV, et cetera. Um, but essentially, streaming is definitely going mainstream. So three and four US broadband households connect OTT devices to the internet. They may still have cable, but they also have uh, these devices. Everybody's got their own household Wi-Fi. Um, pretty much any TV that's been built within the last three years is already streaming capable. It's, it's they're basically internet connected, Wi-Fi connected TVs. So it's it's made this process happen much more quickly, I think, than than anybody kind of anticipated. And if you look at you know looking at how uh, pay TV has sort of evolved over the years, TV sort of hit its zenith uh, in in 2010. And you know they're still big, right? It's still, it, I would never say completely get out of broadcast if you're in broadcast, but you might start thinking about how you're allocating your budget to. Um, reach more consumers who have cut the cord. So you're, you know, it's gone down 2016 was showing 84%. Uh, it's dropped dramatically since then. And, um, you know, 50 million consumers will have cut the cord by the end of 2021. And, you know, just last year, that's 10 million consumers more than what was estimated. So it's happening even faster. People thought this was going to happen quickly. It's happening even faster than anybody suspected. And that just that shows that there's a uh, consumers are absolutely moving really fast in this space. Now, what's interesting too is 
you know, with linear TV, you mentioned three and four households already have it. And you obviously see that, um, that, that the cable subscriptions are still prevalent in the marketplace. But 41% of individuals reached through our platform on connected TV uh, were unique and were not reached by ads on linear TV. So this sort of Venn diagram here of the intersection between linear and CTV, there's a significant amount of the audience that's out there that's only watching CTV, even though they have uh, linear. So they just choose to just go with the convenience of streaming as opposed to uh, cable, and they may be streaming stuff through cable. So the reason why this is blown up so much is it's about convenience. You get to watch what you want to watch, when you want it, and it's not by appointment. Um, so, you know, reasons that from a survey of why digital video uh, viewers prefer viewing, you know, original digital video over linear TV primetime shows is you get to watch on your own schedule. Um, there's fewer commercials. Instead of having a commercial break of maybe 10 to 12 ads uh, during a traditional sort of cable uh, network break, um, you may see one to two ads. Typically, most of the um, content providers will have a maximum 90 second um, commercial break. And so you may see, you know, a couple of 15 seconds and maybe a 30 second or something like that in there. But you generally will have much fewer ads. Um, the content that somebody is watching is generally going to be new or different or original, something that you can't get. Uh, you think about, you know, what just happened at the last year's Academy Awards, this year's Academy Awards with um, what Netflix has done. And so you can kind of see, you know, like that streaming content, they've made, they've, they've made a huge, massive investment in that. Um, Amazon as well. And so it's, it's that content is sort of what's drawing consumers in. Um, there's a massive amount of variety. You can pretty much watch whatever you want. And if you are paying for like an HBO Go or something like that or HBO, um, it's uncensored. So, you know, there's essentially like you get all of the benefits of why people sort of want it. Um, and it, it, it's, it just is exacerbating consumers moving to um, stream as opposed to traditional cable. Um, now it's, it's not for every group though. And this is, this is interesting. So looking at sort of like, the, according to eMarketer, the average time spent per day with TV by age, uh, you can see here that um, the 18 to 24 year olds are spending the least amount of time um, with TV uh, out of any of the demographic traits bands here. You know, zero to 11 years old, um, the, the great babysitter is alive and well, it seems. Um, but you know, 128 minutes uh, on average a day, um, still is pales in comparison to when you look at sort of the boomers. So 55 plus, um, 65 plus, you know, you're watching 340, almost six hours of TV on average a day. So depending on who your audience is, um, if you're going after the 18 to 34 year old bracket, um, you might consider more heavily investing into uh, connected TV or streaming um, than you would be if you were going after an older demographic. But what's interesting on this chart on the right here is you can kind of see over the how streaming has really eaten into traditional TV's um, bandwidth. Uh, so we went from 14% um, down to 50%, uh, sorry, 58% down to 50%. And then, you know, 2016 sort of is like the crossover point. That's where um, TV lost its its market share. And now, you know, you're going to be close probably 2019. My guess is that streaming will be probably um, as much or uh, greater than traditional TV um, as we get it definitely by, by 2020. So you can kind of see like how, how the trends have sort of changed over years. And that's happened that, you know, DVR consumption is also going lower. You don't need a DVR if you can kind of on-demand stream whatever you want to stream. Um, and then DVDs also have fallen by the wayside a little bit too. So the reason, another reason why this is sort of proliferated is the notion of the skinny bundle. And that's where you see, um, if you watch any sort of, you know, major sports uh, uh, on traditional cable, all of these companies like Sling and DirecTV now are advertising heavily to get people to cut the cord. And they're offering sort of a group of network channels as a cheaper alternative to your traditional bundle um, of paid cable. So instead of paying for 600 channels that you're gonna maybe watch a handful of them, um, DirecTV has sort of said, well, let's just, why don't you just pay for the 60 to 120 channels that you want, that you're gonna watch. Same thing for Sling, same thing for Hulu. These are just sort of um, you know examples of monthly monthly payments, so it's significantly cheaper than cable as well too. You don't need the hardware; um, it just streams right through your your Wi-Fi. Um, but there's lots of different options out there, and you see this this is not 
uh, obscure. This is Disney, ESPN, this is Fox, this is NBC Universal, um, ESPN. Um, all of these are examples of where the, the, the major providers are saying, we've got this content, we know that consumers want to engage this way, let's go ahead and make it available to them. What's interesting, again, uh, consumers moving faster than marketers, this is actually a picture that I took with my cell phone uh, last year, a uh, national sporting event here, I live in the Bay Area, um, probably figure out what it was, but it's in the third corner, it's in the finals, Bay Area team was in the finals, uh, over my neighbor's house, he just got Direct TV now, and we're seeing commercial. We're seeing empty spots. We kept seeing commercial break. We'll be right back. And I blocked out the names here of the uh, channel, so uh, keep keep things uh, innocent. But um, nobody's buying them, and it was blowing my mind that you have probably something that was going to be talked about for you know, you know, certainly around the water cooler all the time for you know sports fans in the Bay Area, and nobody was buying the spots. We just kept seeing empty spot after empty spot. And everybody I talked to about this saying, oh, yeah, we see the same thing. So you'll be, if you do stream, you'll probably notice commercial break. We'll be right back. Nobody's buying it. Um, there's so much inventory out there that in our platform, an average daily um, availability, and this is like all inventory sources. So this includes premium. This also includes just sort of like standard exchange spots. But there's over 800 million spots a day available in the San Francisco DMA, which is huge. And granted, the San Francisco DMA is one of the largest uh, DMAs. It's you know, sixth or seventh largest, depending on um, how you're sourcing it. Um, but it also is second to Los Angeles when it comes to um, impressions. So, you know, Los Angeles and San Francisco, that those areas are huge, but it's not just these areas. Smaller markets like the 200th DMA um, still gets 40 to 50 million impressions a day. So it's it's proliferating everywhere and uh, definitely a good time to get in front of that audience. All right. So now how do we weave all of this together? So when we're talking about video everywhere for everyone, um, you really have to have a good strategy if you're gonna pull this off in a way that's gonna, that's gonna generate the solid return for your investment. Um, I kinda like this, this picture for uh, a couple of reasons. You know, sort of like the old then and now comparison. Um, back in the day when people were buying TV, reach was scarce, but attention was plentiful, right? Um, now reach is plentiful and attention is scarce. Um, so you have, you know, you have multiple different ways to reach people. Um, the trick is how do you get their attention? The other reason I, I love, like, kind of like this photo is I've kind of noticed that little ashtray sitting on the front of the TV screen there shows how much times have changed. Uh, you had to walk past the ashtray to change the channel. Um, at any rate, you know, looking at sort of how we weave these things together, we talked about all of these, but, you know, thinking through, okay, if I have video, it doesn't make sense to just put it on YouTube or it doesn't make sense to just put it on Connected TV or put it on social. Your audience isn't just looking at one channel. Your audience is looking at multiple different channels. And so really thinking through how do we weave all of this together so that we're reaching the right people through pre-roll, through social, through search and YouTube, through sort of full episode players, so advanced TV, multiple different devices, or the actual Connected TV OTT experience. And um, the way that we always like to try and break this down is we always try and answer three simple questions. Um, first and foremost is who do you want to reach? Secondly is what do you want to tell them? And third is what do you want them to do? So starting with the question of who do you want to reach, um, I have this bracketed out because that's a variable and you don't have to just have one audience segment. You may have 15 to 20 different audience segments that you want to try and reach and you know that would mean you'd want to build a strategy for each of those because it's going to be different. Uh, remember, video can be heavily personalized now. And while it may not be speaking to Brian or Bob, you could be speaking to Brian's traits um, or Bob's traits um, or or your customers' traits, right? So thinking about like who do you want to reach, um, the targeting is across pretty much across all these platforms. You can you can do this. So first party targeting. Mentioned that that would be like remarketing. Um, you know anybody who's been to your website. You can also upload um, offline data, so customer lists, and target people that way. Um, you may have things like third-party targeting, so that's where you're using um, all of the various, uh, various data management platforms that are out there. You're buying data, data from Oracle or BlueKai, et cetera, um, where they have invested in um, a massive graph of consumers, and then you can target people who are, let's say, you know, certain grocery store shoppers or people who drive certain types of cars, or have in market for certain types of cars because they're pulling in information from different sites. Um, you can do lookalike modeling, which is kind of a blend of the first two uh, tactics. 
And that's where you take your first party data, you analyze the third party data segments and say, okay, what else do these people look like? I know that they've, they've purchased from me in the past, but you know, let's, let's see sort of like the characteristics that we have once we've got, you know, looking at their, at their devices. Um, and let's go find more people that look like them. Um, you can also do remarketing on other devices. So if somebody, let's say, watches a uh, connected TV ad on the big screen, um, it, it may not it may not be cost effective to put another CTV ad message in front of that person if you're if you're paying high CPMs. But you can remarket to people who have just watched that ad to all of the other devices that are connected to the household graph. So you could say if somebody's watched just show if you just showed a, a um, connected TV commercial to um, to somebody in a specific living room, then everybody else in that living room, you can start targeting with display ads on their phone, on their laptop, on their tablet. And it doesn't have to be at that exact moment, but you can target them uh, as they go about their day. You can also retarget other platforms. So let's say that you know that people who come in from Google search are a really valuable audience from a shopping campaign. Um, you're able to remarket those particular people on, on all these other platforms as well too, if you have the right sort of tag management set up. Uh, what do you want to tell them? This is probably the hardest part, and this is probably where I think people sort of struggle and fall down the most, um, is knowing if you've got all these different audiences, what do you want to tell them? You know, what, what makes the most sense to engage these people about your business? And um, we try and always align sort of the messaging with where somebody is in the buying stage, right? So if, if somebody's never heard of you before and you just want to get awareness, um, we highly recommend sort of like brand or, you know, engagement type videos, educational videos. Um, those types of content work really well for uh, sort of getting people to start connecting. Um, once people are aware of who you are and they're sort of in the, the, the purchase journey, um, maybe that's where you would start showing props videos or how-to videos or videos sort of explaining how a process works. Um, you're helping people move from consideration to decision. Once somebody's at the point of decision, highly recommend um, testimonials. So if they're if they're shopping you, they're probably shopping your competitors too. What makes you different? What makes you different? And what makes you different from the standpoint of people who've already bought from you? People saying, you know, I really love Bob's um, roofing because the guys were professional. They got it fixed quickly. Blah blah blah. That that sort of a testimonial goes a long way. Um, case study videos go a long way. And then also just sort of, you know, making sure that you're telling a different video message than you were at the beginning, you know, not a brand engagement, but brand reinforcement of this is why you buy from Bob. Uh, and then at the end, you can also do thank you videos, right? So it might creep people out a little bit, but you can also sort of, you know, tacitly say, you know, if it's a large purchase, showing somebody why that purchase was a good purchase, right? So it could be, um, again, additional brand reinforcement. Maybe you just bought a car. Maybe you're going to start seeing, you know, like, you know, things that you can do with that car um, that you maybe didn't realize from a features perspective. Uh, and then also you can look at like an upsell side of things. So if you know that people have just bought a particular product from your website, um, maybe you have an upsell video that talks about um, additional products that you can um, put that might interest that person. Then finally, it's, you know, what do you what do you want people to do? So you've invested all of this time in determining your audiences, you've built out your targeting, you've got your messaging. Now, what do we want these folks to do, right? So when we're thinking about um, the different stages of the funnel, I kind of use an analogy here, a metaphor, I guess, of an assembly line. And every, every um, part of the funnel has its own job, and that is to move somebody to the next stage. It's not that an awareness video is going to create is going to get somebody to just immediately buy your product. It could if you have an awesome product and an awesome video. I'm not saying that that's not going to happen, but the main goal of awareness should be to get people to consideration. So if it's upper funnel, you should be looking for completed views. Um, as people sort of like move down the funnel, then that's where you start looking at remarketing and start talking um, talking about um, uh, conversion tracking. And essentially, you know. When you're doing a remarketing campaign, it's not just one channel. You should remarket across all channels. And at that point, then it's a true omni-channel. We'll say I'm remarketing on YouTube, I'm remarketing on Facebook, I'm remarketing on pre-roll, remarketing on Snapchat, remarketing on Connected TV. All of these things are, are now um, able to be optimized at a price and performance level where we can say, you know what, YouTube is absolutely crushing it for this audience segment. Let's start shifting budget there, but still be on the other channels, but maybe start moving budget more towards YouTube here, 
maybe Snapchat is doing better for this demographic with more budget there. Um, but just sort of keep the platform demos in mind and um, essentially, you know, always optimize for upper funnel for um, uh, completed views and then for lower funnel really conversion events. And that can be on site or off site. So uh, key takeaways here from today. Um, really try and get personal with your videos, right? The, the technology exists to target uh, the right person, right message at the right time. Um, invest in the time to do it. Invest in the right video for each platform. Make sure that if you are going after people who are going to be all over Snapchat, that you're investing in that vertical format and make sure that you're also running that on uh, stories ads on, on Facebook and, and Instagram as well too. Um, and then, you know, make sure that you're focused on the goals of each objective, right? So if the goal is reach, let's make sure that we get as much reach as we possibly can. If the goal is conversion, let's get conversion. But you know, like in the assembly line, it's not fair to judge the person who puts the doors on the car if the car comes out with any tires. Let's make sure that you know it, um, it, it, each, each platform is doing its job and that you're optimizing each platform for the right metric for success. If you do all of that, you will have tremendous success with video everywhere. So thank you all very much. I'm going to turn it back over to Bob. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Hey, I answered a couple of questions throughout that, and that was some incredible information. But there was one that I wanted to call special attention to. Uh, could you elaborate? Maybe we didn't talk about, like, can I create an ad and use it on other platforms? Can I repurpose that? Or, you know, what do I have to do to get on all these platforms? Great question. Um, so the answer is yes. So if you if you're on YouTube um, to run and to run paid YouTube ads, the video actually has to be uploaded to your YouTube channel. But that's not to say that that video can't be used elsewhere too. And if you're talking about remarketing, if you're talking about you know, the the specific audience segment that you're trying to reach, I would definitely um, advocate for consistency of messaging across platforms. It just makes you look like that much smarter of a marketer and um, that much, you know, your business sort of has it together when people start seeing consistent messaging across all the different platforms. And it may not be that it's the exact same video. You may want to custom tweak it or tailor it a little bit so that you're having maybe like a 30 second video on YouTube. Maybe you trim it down to 15 seconds for pre-roll. Um, and then maybe you're looking at like a six second bumper for sort of like, you know, stories format. Uh, and then a 15 second for connected TV. But keeping that message consistent um, is is key to success, definitely. So you can repurpose that across across the board. Awesome. I think you answered a lot of the questions as we went through that, and I, I tried to as well. So I think we're good. I definitely appreciate your time. Um, for those people that have stuck around, so stick uh, around next in two weeks. We're going to be uh, covering return on ad spend. That's April 4th. Uh, we're going to have another great guest speaker, Drew Supes, on that. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining us. Give us your feedback and uh, look forward to continuing these buzzword breakdowns. And thanks again, Brian. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Bob.